Hey guys, we're going to be taking a look at Milwaukee's new M18 rocket light. So, last year we took a look at the M18 stand light, that's this one right here. They've made its bigger brother, uh, the rocket light. Uh, so the stand light has 2,000 lumens of uh, output, the rocket light on high has 3,000. Um, so, it's 50% brighter, and it's got a differently designed head, and in addition to that, uh, the only knock I gave the, uh, the stand light last year, other than being really expensive, was that it didn't have a, an AC power cord plug-in. The rocket light does, so they fixed that complaint, but then again, they've jacked the price way up on it. So, let's go ahead and take a look, and I'll compare the two of these, uh, tell you what I like about both of them, uh, and then, you know, it's up to you to decide which one fits your needs best, uh, but I'm leaning actually towards the stand light. So, I'll give you my reasons why in just a minute. Uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the rocket light. Alright, for the close-up, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. Uh, you've got 5 amp hour battery right here. You can see there's a bunch of extra room. Uh, so you can fit a 9 amp hour in here. I'm glad Milwaukee planned that out. Um, well, this one, less so because I think the, the 9 amp hour came out about the same time this one did. Um, you've got your charging indication here. It's just like the uh, regular charger. Instead of one LED that changes from green to red, you just have one red one and one green one. Uh, it's got the little key here, so you know solid red is charging, solid green is charged, uh, flashing red is um, continuing to charge, I don't know, no, flashing red is hot, <laughs> and then uh, flashing alternating is you got a bad battery. Um, same as the regular charger. Uh, the one thing this doesn't have is the 80% charge that the rapid charger has, so this is a slow charger. So I ran a 2 amp hour battery charge completely on this, both while the light was on and while it was off. Both took 38 minutes. That's the same amount of time that it takes for a regular M18 slash M12 combination charger to charge a 2 amp hour battery. So 38 minutes for a 2 amp hour battery. Um, so you're running like 19 minutes per amp hour there. Uh, with a rapid charger, uh, it's about 66% of that, so it's like 25 minutes uh, for a 2 amp hour battery on a rapid charger. Uh, so this is a regular M18 charger, and I'm guessing that might be because this is a IPX4. Um, that, that means it's splash proof, so you can leave it out in the rain. And I don't think all the vents that a regular charger has uh, are going to play well with that. So that's probably part of the reason. Um, so you got your AC port right here. It doesn't have a grounding lug, or, uh, you know, but uh, it's probably a double insulated tool, so it doesn't matter. Uh, and then you've got a rubber gasket around the outside, and there's a little lip in here that contacts that, and it's spring loaded, so it closes back up when you're not using it. Alright, so that's the charging port, uh, and AC port. You've got the same handle that you do with the stand light, the same little trigger that pops in here. And, oh, I can't deploy it because it's sitting on that third leg. Uh, and it slides back up. The only difference is you got this over-molded handle right here. All right. And then moving on up, they made some improvements here. Uh, first of all, these collars, they're either aluminum or magnesium. Not sure which one, but they're metal. So with your stand light versus the rocket light, these were plastic on the old design. And I did see a couple reviews saying they were broken. Um, so Milwaukee beefed these up, made them out of metal. Uh, props to that. And then you got the same guard design right here as you do in the old one, so this helps protect against impacts. It's not terribly sturdy, but it's just meant to be some shock absorption uh, in case you drop it or it falls over. All right, let's take a look at the controls on the top, and I'll go ahead and stand this up. All right, so here's the uh, light head and the control panel. Um, so right here you've got a brightness indicator, these three different LEDs, uh, and then you've got a battery indicator. So these light up red if you're on battery, and they light up white if you're on the power cord. Uh, and then in addition to that, you've got an on button, and then you've got a brightness setting, um, which I really like because the old one was just one button, and you turn it on with one push, and then it starts full brightness, and then you hit it again, and it's medium, and you hit it again, it's low, and you hit it again, and it's off. This one, you just hit it once, and it's on the brightest setting it was on last time. So, turn it on, 
and you can see it's on full, now it's lower, lower, lower. So low mode, uh, and then we turn it off, and ta-da, it comes back on low. Um, so on low mode, you're gonna get eight hours of runtime uh, with a five amp hour battery, and that's 900 lumens. And then medium is 1700 lumens, and you're gonna get four-ish hours of runtime. And then on high, that is 3,000 lumens, and you're going to get uh, approximately two hours of runtime. Uh, they say they say two plus, four plus, and eight plus hours. I ran this with a two amp hour battery and got 48 minutes, which if you do the math, it comes out to exactly two hours if you're running on a five amp hour battery. So when you see the plus on there, just ignore the plus. They probably got like an extra minute out of it and really, like, ooh, two plus hours. Uh, <laughs> one thing though I, I've seen from Milwaukee is I, I think with the exception of their M12 flashlight, I have gotten the exact runtime they specify on all these lighting products. Um, so with their HP floodlight, with their stand light, um, everything runs exactly the amount of time, including this one, uh, that they're advertising. And that the plus, and that's just, uh, eh, maybe you'll get a little bit more, uh, but uh, I just ignore the plus. Now, color temperature for this head is a little bit cooler than it is with the stand light. And I'll turn both of them on in a little bit uh, and let you see the difference. Uh, also, since there are four individual light heads and there aren't like reflectors all over the place, the, the light output is a lot less even than it is with the stand light. So you get like a triangle of brightness in the middle there where they all overlap. Uh, and then you've, you can definitely tell that it's a multi-element head. You can tell it a little bit with the stand light, but it's very obvious with this one. So if you're doing lighting, tasks where it has to be even, uh, like maybe painting or drywalling when you're looking for areas you missed or areas that aren't quite smooth, uh, you might not want to do this one. You might want the stand light if you're looking for you know a tripod style light like this one. Uh, but if you're doing just about any other type of work, you know, work outside, uh, you know, roughing in stuff, uh, framing, anything like that, concrete work, uh, you can probably get away with this one without any problems. I uh, just wanted to make that, uh, you know, a point uh, to mention that. All right, so for the head here, you've got three individually rotating elements like this, um, about one axis. You can't, multi uh, you know, turn them about more than one axis individually. Then you've got a swiveling head uh, and a pivot. So head has two degrees of freedom, and then these individual lights by themselves have another degree of freedom. Um, so you can point them all in the same direction, or you can point them all downwards. Uh, that's one thing the stand light cannot do, it cannot point down. This is like a, probably like an 80 degree angle these are downwards at. Uh, the stand light can get like maybe 60 degrees downwards. Uh, so that's a big plus this one has. Um, plus you can do 360 degree lighting. If you take this and put it up near the ceiling and turn it on like this, if you have a white ceiling, it lights up the whole room just like a light fixture is going to do. Oh, and just another note, when I got this thing, uh, so it'll be easier to look at it this way. So you see this uh, 3 16 inch uh, hex head screw here? Um, this wasn't tightened down super tight, and when I first got this, if you like bumped this, the whole thing would swivel around, like a, a quarter to a half turn. So I cranked this down, and now it doesn't do that, it stays put uh, where I turn it to, which is good because you don't want, and I, th I think you can do that with these... Uh, Phillips head as well, uh, screws, you can tighten these down so you know you don't want to set this and then have your light droop uh, while you're trying to do something. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad you can tighten those uh, and get it to stay where you're going to put it instead of having to fight it all the time. And sometimes it doesn't like to stow if you don't have it at the right index. There we go. All better. All right, as far as similarities go, uh, they basically took the stand light design and changed a few things, made a few tweaks, uh, and you got the rocket light. So the legs and this release handle are all the same. The only difference they made is they put a uh, rubber overmold on both handles here. And this handle's a little bit bigger because it's got the uh, status indicator and, a, and different controls. This one just has a one button interface. This one has an on, a brightness setting, and then it'll tell you if you're on uh, battery or wall power, and then it'll tell you the brightness with these gauges right there. 
All right, so I've got the rocket light on. It's the only thing in the garage uh, that is a source of light right now. Uh, and it's, it's lighting up the whole area pretty decently. Uh, let me actually put it a little bit higher. I bumped the brightness control there. Um, you can see if you point it straight down, you are getting excellent illumination everywhere that you're standing. Uh, it's, it's, it's every bit as bright right here as it is when I've got all my overhead lights on. Uh, if you use it to illuminate the ceiling instead, kind of turn them all up like that. Uh, you're not getting quite as much light down here, but it's a much more diffused and spread out light. It's a much more even lighting source. Um, so I'll go ahead and turn on the stand light and kind of aim them both at the back wall and you can get an idea of what 50% brighter looks like. So put them at the same height and here's the stand light. That's full brightness and you can kind of see, oh, I hope you can see, I can see it, the stand light has a more warm color uh, and the rocket light has a little bit more cool color temperature to it. Now I don't know if that's the glass on this thing it has uh, yellowed over time. I've had this stand light for probably about a year. Uh, well, if you want to know exactly how long I've had it, go back and look at my other video. It's date stamped. Um, but this one seems to be, just looking at them, this one looks a little bit more true to color actually than the stand light does now that I'm looking at them up against a white wall or an off-white wall. So go ahead and I'll turn the stand light off and then you can see this is high, this is low, which is going to be a 50% duty cycle and if we're doing pulse width modulation you're probably going to get a flicker in the camera. You can't see it in real life. And then here's low, which is going to be a 25% duty cycle uh, using pulse width modulation. Alright, and I'll turn that one off. I'll turn the stand light on by itself. It is much brighter, the rocket light is much brighter than the stand light. So, alright, let's take these out to the backyard and get an idea of how much light they can throw in an outdoor area. Alright guys, both lights are here. Uh, this is the older uh, M18 stand light. This one's the newer M18 rocket light. Uh, so they set up pretty much the same way. They've almost got the same exact mechanism. The only thing different is the head uh, for the two of these. Just push down and pull up. Grab these collars. Turn the head whichever way you want. And up it goes. Lock the collars in place. Same way for this one. He's got a little bit more to do with the head if you want to adjust these individually. One thing you'll notice, for some reason, the uh, rocket light here is a little bit shorter, and I think that's just shorter masts right here because uh, they have the same base. The base is the same height, this is the same height. Uh, it just doesn't extend as far as the uh, stand light does. I'll make sure I got it up there. You can hear it hit it stop. And here this one hit it stop, so that's as high as it goes. Now, when it comes to portability, I do have one big complaint for the rocket light. I pick both of these up, both of them have a 5 amp hour battery installed, and you can see I'm holding both of these at the back of the handle. One of them is balanced. That's the stand light. The rocket light is nowhere close to balanced. I'm not putting any torque on these handles, I'm just holding them. Now, to make it even worse, I'll take the battery out. Still not balanced, a lot closer to it, but not quite. So just keep in mind, this one is going to be a lot more annoying to carry places than the uh, original stand light is. This one is incredibly balanced. No problem. Pick one of these up. Uh, you know, it's just the weight of the light you got. This one, you got that extra torque on your hand when you're carrying it. 
uh, especially if you hold up towards the front of the handle. So I might elect on this one to carry it like this instead, or possibly up over my shoulder. There we go. Um, but carrying with the handle is really annoying. This one, a little bit easier to get up there. This one's a little bit lighter. All right, so I've got the rocket light and the stand light set up back to back. You can see uh, the rocket light's over here. It's actually quite a bit brighter than the stand light is. If you want to go by specs, 50% brighter. Um, it also has a more true to color feel uh, than the stand light does. The stand light looks a little bit yellow with its illumination. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, turn these so you can see them both lighting up uh, the trees in the back here. And then I'll go ahead and uh, turn the stand light off. So now you've just got the rocket light. That's the only thing lighting up these trees. It's very bright, very well illuminated. Uh, and then I'll do just the stand light here. You can see the difference. And turn the stand light off, and we'll go through the modes on the rocket light. So this is on high, obviously, and then this is medium. And once again, that flickering you're seeing is just the pulse width modulation that you can only see in the camera. You can't see it in real life. Uh, and then here is low. The other thing the rocket light can do that the stand light can't is 360 degree illumination. You can turn these straight down, pretty much, uh, and illuminate right around the base of this. Uh, that's something stand light can't do. And then if you want a little bit wider area, you go ahead and just flare those out a little bit. And you can see a little bit farther away. It's not quite as intense, uh, but it's a, a lot larger area that it can light up. So if you have workspace, if you have a room that you want to light up the middle of uh, and have light on all the walls, the rocket light's a better solution. Um, but if you have a large outdoor area, the stand, two of the stand lights, which cost about the same uh, as the rocket light if you buy them with the, the bonus battery kit, um, they might be the better solution. Then again, you've got to lug two of these around uh, instead of one, and you can't, plug, uh, you can't plug the stand light in, you can plug the rocket light in. So there are pros and cons for both of them. Alright, so outside I noticed the rocket light was a little bit shorter than the stand light uh, and I took a tape measure and measured it and they're, you know, they're claiming the rocket light is 7 feet tall and they are not jipping you, the rocket light is 7 feet tall, it's 84 and a half inches tall. Um, so the stand light is also advertised as up to 7 feet tall, uh, but it tops out at 90 and a half inches. So not sure what's going on there, but uh, Bonus? I, I don't know exactly. Maybe the stops on mine are broken or misplaced or something like that. Uh, but these should be the same height when deployed, but they're not. Uh, this one's taller than advertised. This one is the height that is advertised. All right, I told you I'd get to which of these I prefer. And the reason I said the stand light uh, is if you look at the value, I think you're getting more for your money with the stand light. So when they, they released the stand light, it was $250, $250 bare tool. Uh, and since then, Milwaukee, from what I can tell, Milwaukee doesn't like to drop the price of their tools, but they will throw in extra freebies. So right now you can get the stand light for $250 with a 5 amp hour starter pack. So that's a 5 amp hour battery, a charger, and the light for $250. Um, seeing that the, I think the 5 amp hours are like $120 or $130 by themselves, that's actually a pretty good deal. Um, you just have to get a battery with it. And since it doesn't take a cord, you need a battery. Um, now for the stand light, it's 400 bare tool, and if you buy it with a 9 amp hour battery, the, the high demand battery, and it comes with a, a carrying bag too, it's $550. So for the price of one of these with a 9 amp hour battery and a carrying bag, you can get two of these, both with a 5 amp hour battery, plus um, you save 50 bucks. So, right now you can get two of these with more amp hour battery, if you put them together you get 10 amp hours of battery, uh, or one of these with one 9 amp hour battery for about the same price. So that does 3,000 lumens, this does 2,000, so if you buy two of these you got 4,000 lumens. So 
my money's still on the stand lights. I use this thing in every single video. That's why the lighting's a little bit off right now in this video, because this thing is sitting in the corner over there, uh, shining up at the ceiling and kind of bouncing down more light on me, so I'm not backlit. Uh, right now, I've only got my M18 floodlight over in the other corner. Um, so, for this, uh, you know, with the even lighting it provides, uh, and it's got great runtime, 2000 lumens, I'd skip the stand light, and I'd still, or I'd skip the rocket light, and I'd still go with the stand light. That's my opinion, though. Let me know what you think. Uh, you, you have two of these big things to carry if you go with two of these uh, versus one of these. Um, this one can shoot straight down, uh, takes a cord, so there's pros and cons to both of them. I just think the stand light's a better deal. Alright, so hopefully this review is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below, and uh, let me know your thoughts on these, too. Which one do you prefer? And don't forget to subscribe.